So is the new Gerard Butler movie Kandahar a carbon copy of The Covenant? It has been a week of advanced screeners for me, kind of exciting. Earlier this week, I went to go see The Blackening about a month, exactly a month ahead of time. So that was exciting. And then last night, I watched a virtual screening of Kandahar, the Gerard Butler film that's coming out this coming weekend or next weekend, the weekend of Memorial Day. As I film this, it's May 19th. So this is not going to go up until probably sometime next week. So it'll be a couple few days old. Anyway, okay, Kandahar. I don't remember if I saw a full on trailer, but at some point I found out about this movie. I heard about the synopsis and it reminded me a lot of Guy Ritchie's The Covenant. It seemed almost like it wanted to be a carbon copy of it just on the face of it, okay? I don't know when this movie was filmed in relation to The Covenant. I meant to look that up and I completely forgot. Whatever. On the face of it, it might seem like it's the exact same movie. You've got uh, an American, well in this case, uh, Gerard Butler's character is not a military guy. He's not like an army guy. He's a, like a secret agent, sort of CIA or something. So you've got this military intelligence guy and he's with his interpreter and they need to get through hostile territory. Very similar to the plot of The Covenant, but not really because the plot of this is beyond that superficial similarity. This plot is completely different. In fact, the plot of this feels like it's a bit more intricate than the plot of The Covenant. So I go into this wondering if it was going to be as enjoyable as plain was. This was quite enjoyable. Don't really know yet if I feel like it's better than plain or if plain is better than this. I honestly don't know. I like them almost equally maybe. Maybe plain just a skosh more, but this was pretty solid in my opinion. I thought that the storytelling was decent. It had a pretty decent plot. It had a pretty, a, an intricate-ish plot in that you have all these different factors that are going on. It's not just about these two men. It's about the men chasing them. And by saying it's about the men chasing them, I mean, it also sort of delves into the personality and the lives of the baddies who are chasing these two men. So in that regard, it felt like it was spread out a little bit more as far as characters and the characters that you came to know. This was directed by the same guy who made Greenland, also starring Gerard Butler. I remember doing a virtual screening for that movie a couple years ago, and I was going to do a video review and then I just never got around to it. I enjoyed it. It was all right, but I guess I just didn't feel strongly enough about it to film a review for it. Also, he filmed the movie Angel Has Fallen, which I guess is the second in that series of movies, maybe. I like that one okay. I watched a movie review that another YouTuber did about this film, and he was saying that it was filmed completely in Saudi Arabia, if I'm remembering correctly, it was filmed completely in Saudi Arabia and that he thought it might have been the this only the second American film that was made in Saudi Arabia, which I found interesting. I found that interesting enough that I wrote it down. I also wrote down a quote that he said, which was sort of summarizing the underlying theme of this movie. And by underlying, I mean, you've got the overlying theme, which is these two men trying to get through hostile territory to safety. The underlying theme, according to this particular movie reviewer, and I, I think he, he pegged it perfectly, is that it's basically about what happens to a war-torn country after a country that has war-torn it leaves. Because they do go into specific detail. So I'm, I'm, this takes place after the U.S. has withdrawn from Afghanistan and the complete devastation that they left behind. And you see the ramifications of those actions. You see people that have all this 
weaponry that the U.S. left behind. You see or you you hear mention of the danger that women are now in because the positions that they held before the U.S. withdrawal, they can no longer do that. Like they can't be teachers anymore. They can't have a job, you know, that sort of thing, like a definite regression of rights for certain people in this particular country. So they delve into that and it's just, you, you, you kind of have this mix of emotions when you're watching it because everything is so complicated and nuanced with these people that are living in this situation. And I liked how they made the baddies in here. They had more depth than your typical baddie that you see. Like they had more depth than let's say the bad guy characters in The Covenant who were chasing Facing Jake Gyllenhaal's character and Dar Salim's character. Those were just your typical Taliban, they're bad. They're here's the bad guys coming. And they, like, we don't know anything. Not that we really care to know anything, as far as I'm concerned. I don't care to know anything about. I am definitely broad brushing the Taliban here. Uh, yes, I will admit that. But basically, the villains in that movie are cookie cutter. The villains in this movie are not cookie cutter. I found that interesting. I appreciated that they did that, that they made these kids. Like the, the main guy who is chasing them, he almost seems like, he seems like he's someone who doesn't get joy out of what he's doing. So you know he's not, it doesn't seem like at his heart or at his core, he's a bad person. Same thing with another guy who's chasing him and they both have their different motivations. So the, the premise of the story is Gerard Butler has carried off this job in one country and then he goes to carry off a job in another country and the ramifications of what he did for his first job come back to bite him in the butt and then that's when people start coming after him you've got elements from <laughs> you've got elements from the first country coming after him and then you've got a, a third party that's also coming after him for their own purposes. So it was just, it was pretty interesting how they, <sighs> they're singing the song of their people. What I was trying to say is there's all these different elements at play. I think that's what I was saying. I don't know, maybe I wasn't. And so there are just these different things in motion and it added to the complexity of the film. It, this was a two hour long movie and I personally feel like it made decent use of the that time that we had. Some people that made reviews of this indicated that they felt like it dragged a bit in the beginning. I didn't really feel like that I I liked that slower pace that it had at the very beginning because it was setting up the whole reason for this chase that was happening in the rest of the movie and i liked also the different there were different chase like actual and by chase during the movie i mean like just the pursuit of these men but there were also scenes where they were in direct contact with the people chasing them and i liked how they played that scene out i liked how that the people chasing them weren't complete doofuses and it was very tense and it was very close at times there were a couple things that happened that was like why didn't they just do such and such it was very minor and the, you know, like the chase through the marketplace i liked how that was done you know the typical chase through the marketplace i appreciated how they carried it out and it just it added to the fact that they made their pursuers worthy adversaries really helped give this movie more weight. And I liked that about this film. I also enjoyed the cinematography. There were some shots that were really cool. There was also a really cool shot, uh, like a, it was like a chase scene at night and you were seeing some of those shots through the night vision lens. That was pretty cool how, how that happened. I liked also the downtime that we got before and during the chase. You know, he's interacting with his friend, uh, Travis Fimmel is, uh, I think he's like a CIA dude. And they have these, they have this scene where they're talking together. And then during the scene, during the chase, sorry, during the pursuit, Gerard Butler's character and his interpreter, they have moments where they're talking with each other. And you really get to know more about the interpreter and the tragedies in his background is very 
heartbreaking. There's this scene where he's mourning his son and that was quite touching. Yeah, that that was really that was sad, very sad to watch that part. So in the midst of all of this action and tense moments and pursuit and cool chases and that falls under action, but whatever. In the midst of all that, you do have these moments of humanity and, and these these two men bonding as they're trying to escape and them helping each other through the course of their 400 mile trek because it's like a 400 mile trek they have to make to get to this point where they can be extracted. So um, I appreciated all of that about this. Also something that I liked um, that they touched on, though in some ways it felt like it was a bit shoehorned in. I'll try to explain what I mean. This movie addresses very specifically, there's mention of it, the general feeling of ingratitude for the interpreters and everything that they risk. As I mentioned in the, about the movie, The Covenant, um, their lives at risk, their families' lives at risk because they stepped up and they served as role of interpreter, helping the U.S. and whatever other forces were there be able to navigate the language and understanding the culture and stuff like that. And so it touched on that in one particular scene between the two main characters. But that particular scene, though I did appreciate that it was something that they touched on, that honestly felt like it was so shoehorned in, it did not flow organically to me. It felt like, okay, we need to get this message across, so let's put this here when they're talking. And it just, it really didn't flow. Honestly, I don't feel like we needed to be told that line. Gerard Butler specifically mentions this part. And I don't, I don't feel like we needed to be told that. I think we got that message pretty clearly already but it was just like in case you didn't know we weren't grateful enough to the translators and the interpreters and blah blah so like, well we get that already you don't you don't need to say it so that felt a, a bit wonky and clunky sorry hold on the dog that just had to run out of here and scream at whatever noise they heard now he's back and he's crying to get back in the chair hold on a moment there were a couple of quotes in here that i liked enough that i wrote them down as soon as i heard them one was the interpreter was telling Gerard Butler because Gerard was wanting to get, you know, they made he has a kid and he wants to get home to his first kid's graduation, stuff like that. And he made a comment to her because he'd lost a son. He said, I mean, he, he made a comment to her. He made a comment to Gerard Butler's character. You've got to go home and hold her in your arms before you forget what it feels like. And I thought that was a really well written and true comment with regard to parents and your children and how quickly they grow up and um i just i like that i like i thought that was a really really nice nicely written line another one was someone said maybe it was i can't remember maybe gerard butler's he was a character he said ancient wars were fought for spoils modern wars aren't meant to be won which feels very true. I mean, just given the events of the past few decades in the world. Something else that I appreciated that I kind of skipped over in my notes was I liked how they tried to bring some nuance to the different interpretations people have about the Islamic faith they follow. You could see the extremist, you could see the more moderate, you know, and they're different sort of actions based on their interpretations of their faith. There was a scene where Gerard Butler was specifically addressing that. Oh, no, was it? No, no, I'm sorry, not Gerard Butler, another dude that was chasing them. He specifically addressed that issue with some kid that had like an IED. That was also a line that felt like it was a bit shoehorned in. Like they just needed to let us know, uh, yeah, these guys have the wrong interpretation, th that sort of thing. Well, I don't know, you could debate about that sort of stuff all day long, but that felt like a line that was okay you just put this in to let us know that they have the wrong you know it's just i don't know it, it that that part didn't work but but that kind of that sort of falls into the con ish territory well, not really cons it just stuff that kind of jumped out at me as something that didn't flow naturally there were a couple of <laughs> there were a couple of things in here that i wrote down that one was an actual laugh out loud moment that i had there's a scene where they're arguing with each other 
and the interpreter stalks off. He's going to just go his own way. And then very soon after that, something happens and you see him in the background running back to the, to the vehicle where Gerard Butler's character was. That made me laugh. I thought that was so funny. But it, and it's not even something like hugely overt because the camera's focusing on Gerard. It's just in the background. You see the guy running back. I thought that was funny. I laughed. It wasn't comedic, but it was comedic at the same time. Also, something else I wrote down, that fanny packs are handy. There's a scene where Gerard Butler, he goes to get something and he's wearing a doggone fanny pack and he's open his pack and he gets it out. So don't ever make fun of people wearing fanny packs, y'all. <laughs> anyway, I just, I thought that was funny. Okay, so now kind of delving in a bit to the con territory. I felt like the relationship between these two men, while pretty solidly written, it didn't feel like it had had the same level of depth that the relationship between Jake Gyllenhaal's character and Dar Salim's character in uh, The Covenant was. That particular story of those two men felt so much more profound and and heart and just very very heartwarming. Their character didn't feel like it had that depth to it. It tried. And I don't know exactly why it was that it it ended up not feeling like it had that same level of depth that the uh, that the characters in the other story did. Maybe it was because they weren't together very long before their lives became this chase. Whereas in the Covenant, they go on some missions and they do some stuff and there's multiple scenes with Jake Gyllenhaal and Dar Salim and they're interacting with each other they're going out they're dealing they're doing their stuff so it's like they had more of a backstory to be told before the actual crux of the story happened in the covenant whereas in this one they meet each other oh all of a sudden they can't oh sorry they meet each other then all of a sudden they can't do their mission because people are after them and then they're on the run so they form their bond through the course of their flight out of the area, but it didn't feel like it was, it just didn't feel like it was as hard hitting as in the other movie. So that was kind of con-ish. Also, there's a scene at the beginning where Gerard Butler's character's doing something on the sly and he's out of sight of these guards that are watching over them. Then he comes back in sight and then all of a sudden they say, show us what you did, show us what you did. And they knew where he was to begin with. So why do they all of a sudden want to know, why didn't someone just go down in there or where he was and watch what he was doing? That felt a little bit weak because it was just weird. If you were that suspicious of him, why didn't you just go down and watch over him, see what he was doing the whole time? So that was, uh, and that happened at the beginning. So I was like, uh-oh, are we setting ourselves up for some poor writing? But no, that sort of thing didn't happen often. In general, the writing in here was fairly solid. Something else that stuck out at me as like a what? They're traveling through this immense desert and cell phones are still working. And maybe I just don't know enough about the area. Maybe they were close enough to towers but are there really a whole lot of cell towers out in the expanse of desert? Even though it's a roadway, it's like a dirt roadway and you see power lines. I still just, I question whether or not cell phones would work really well out in a place like this. Because this is where they spent a lot of their time in places like this. So that was something that was like, mm, I don't know about that. Also, some of the gunfights and some of the shooting that happened, it's like, how in the heck could they really miss? Are you serious? Especially as much as they were firing and as easy of a target as some of them were, how could they miss? Those sorts of things. It wasn't enough to make me hate it. It's just stuff I noticed. And then there was another scene when there was a chase and they got blocked. One of the people that was pursuing them blocked them off with their vehicle, but then they didn't bother to get out of their vehicle to continue the pursuit. They just stayed in their vehicle. That didn't make any sense. Uh, so I was like, Okay, that's weird. And then there was a some stuff that happened at the end with a, a couple of characters. I didn't understand actions, certain actions that they did at the end. I didn't understand their motivations or I didn't understand this particular person's motivations behind something that he did at the end. He made a comment. I didn't write down the quote, but he made a comment and I still didn't understand what that meant with regard to what he did at the end. I'm, I'm being vague because I don't want to give you guys specific spoilers about things that are happening, but just those are things that I wrote down in the con territory. There's also a s s 
stuff involving a character in here who uh, has been a convert to Islam and something happens with this character in this particular scene at the end and they do like a close up or image of some stuff he's saying right at the end and that felt a bit shoehorny as well because I felt only a very superficial or surface level sort of understanding of this character and his motivations for converting to Islam. There were just like this throwaway line that he made. It was like, well, okay, but I'm, you're still not con overly convincing me. And then that scene at the end, when he's saying some of the stuff he's saying, I just didn't feel that connection with him. Like I think the filmmakers were trying to make us feel. And maybe that's just because of the way his character was written, we don't get that that attachment to him like we do the two main characters. So I don't know how much of that is just a, a fault of the story or the way they portrayed it on film. I, I, I don't know. Uh, so that was something that definitely stuck out at me. None of the things in the con column are, were enough to make me dislike this film. I enjoyed it. It's coming out like I said, Memorial Day weekend. The problem is it's coming out against quite a bit of competition. This particular weekend, the Fast X franchise has released another, like what, movie 100 or something. Then next weekend is The Little Mermaid, which I'm sure it's probably going to end up being number one just because it's a family film and because people, for whatever reason, they still flock to Disney live action movies. I have no idea why, but anyway, so that's probably gonna take a bulk of it. We still have Guardians that's doing pretty well. And also the Bert, is it Bert Kreischer? Is that, that's his name? Uh, the Machine movie is coming out, which I'm gonna go see the um, Thursday night preview of that at, I think it's at nine o'clock at night. I don't really like to go to movies that late, but I'm gonna be occupied over the weekend, so I won't have a chance to go. So I'm just gonna go then. He's also supposed to have some sort of like, some sort of live stand-up thing at the end of it. It's gonna be live streamed at the theater. So that'll be hopefully cool. Anyway, the point is, this is a pretty solid film. It's enjoyable, but I'm not sure how great it's gonna do at the box office. Gerard Butler sort of has this reputation of not necessarily picking the best material. And even though the the year started off with a pretty solid film of his called, you know, Plane, which I thought was really good. This is also pretty doggone good. I just don't know that this is gonna be something that's gonna perform spectacular, spectacularly the this coming weekend, but I think it would be pretty cool to watch it on the big screen. Maybe I'll end up going to see it if Arturo is interested. Because some of the shots in here, the cinematography and stuff, and some of the action scenes in here, I think would probably look pretty cool on the big screen. But that's just me. Anyway, I've gone through all my notes about this. I can't think of anything else. So I believe I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. And we'll see you guys later. Bye.